Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be creating two watercolor cards. So I've taped down some Arches cold press watercolor paper to a hardboard. These are cut to four and a half by four and a half inches. And I'm going to be painting them with Magello Mission Gold watercolors. As usual, all of the supplies that I use in today's video are linked below down in the video description and in the supplies section at my blog. I'm also using this set of pearlescent watercolors from Fine Tech. I'm going to use this nice gold shade on both of these watercolor backgrounds. So I started out by putting kind of a nice juicy layer of clean water on top of the watercolor paper. And then I dropped in some gold paint. This is that pearlescent gold paint from Fine Tech. I'm just dropping it in random areas, not in any specific order. And then I brought in some bright pink and also some purple from that palette. So I'm dropping in the colors a little bit at a time, um, letting the colors really wick away and create just a nice background. Now I'm gonna take a block here and put some gold paint on it and splatter it on and then keep painting. So in the past, when I've shown similar backgrounds like this, I've done the color, let it dry, and then added a layer of the gold pearlescent paint. This time I painted these backgrounds with the gold paint. So I let the gold pearlescent fine tech paint mix with all of the other colors that I'm using. And an interesting thing happened as I was working on these. I thought, well, gosh, this gold really kind of sinks into the paper and you can't really see it very much. So I kept adding more and more and more onto this blue and green piece. I kept dropping in more and more color and more and more of that gold pearlescent paint. And then as I started drying it, I used it with my heat tool, that gold paint came all the way back up to the surface and it was actually really striking. I really loved how bright and vibrant the gold became. So you're gonna notice that the gold on the blue and green piece is really intense, whereas on the purple and pink piece, it's not quite as intense. So if you do this technique, just remember that as it dries, your gold will come to the surface. So it's kind of a little bit of a surprise. You don't really know what you're gonna get. It's kind of a full, fun, cool technique. I'm gonna use the Like You, or I'm sorry, Love You stamp set from Concord and Ninth, as well as the Love Shaker Die from Pretty Pink Posh. I thought these two backgrounds would make some fun kind of Valentine's Day cards. Since Valentine's Day is this week, I thought it was the perfect time. I'm using some Versamark ink on this stamp here. Versamark ink stays sticky for a long time, so it's perfect for embossing. And I'm going to stamp this love greeting or image twice. This watercolor paper, particularly Arches Cold Press, has a lot of texture. And so as you stamp really solid, bold images like this, you're gonna get a lot of gapping and it's not gonna stamp very well. So just by stamping it twice from the get-go, it really helps with that. And even though I did that, I still noticed that as I applied some white embossing powder, this is Alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, as I applied that, you could still see the texture of the paper. If you wanted to, you could stamp it another time and add more embossing powder, but I kind of liked the texture. To finish off that first card with the uh, large love greeting, I painted a strip of watercolor paper. This is just a strip that I cut off the original piece. I turned it over and used the back side. Painted that with that gold fine tech color and then embossed a smaller greeting on it. Now, I thought this greeting was perfect. It says, I love that I know you. So this is sort of like a Valentine's Day card for maybe not a romantic love, although it could be, but it could be great for a friend just to say, I love that I know you. I love that you're part of my life. I think that's kind of a cool greeting. So I ended up trimming this down to three and a half by three and a half. So it was a little bit smaller. I put some foam adhesive on the back and I adhered it to a Nina Solar White card, uh, cardstock card. This is actually the 110 pound version. And I ended up trimming it down so the finished card size was four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So this is a smaller square card, but you can still put it into a regular envelope. At first I thought I'd adhere this small strip greeting right over the words, and then I eventually peeled that up gently and moved it to the center so it's not quite covering those bottom two letters. I thought it looked a little bit better right there in the center. 
To finish off this card, I took a bold jelly roll pen. This is the size 10 bold, as well as a T-square ruler. And I just drew some border lines around this center area. That greeting is a little bit smaller. I didn't like so much space all around it. So I thought adding just a really fine line would really set off this card and give it a more finished look. For the other card, I'm going to take that Love Shaker die from Pretty Pink Posh, and I'm using some Nina Solar White cardstock to cut it out. This is actually the 80 pound version, so it's a little bit lighter weight than what I'm using for my card bases. I also took a heart die set from Lawn Fawn. Um, I can't remember what this one's called, but it'll be linked down below in the supplies. But I love that it has the stitch on the inside of the cut line and also on the outside. So if you wanted to use both pieces that you cut, you definitely could. Today I'm going to be using the inside piece, which is the full heart with a straight cut on the outside and then stitch on the inside. And I adhered that to a standard A2 card. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half tall. And I just used some foam adhesive for that press that down. And then as far as this other die cut goes, I decided to not make it a shaker card, although you definitely could. And I just adhered it straight down onto that other heart. I thought the bright white card stock really stands out above that colorful background heart. So those are my two cards for today. These are super simple watercolor cards. Hope you guys enjoyed the, a little bit of fun with watercolors today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another card video very soon. Mm -hmm.